Welcome to the latest episode of Bearcats <coughs> Coaches Show. I'm Thomas Holland. I'm here with head volleyball coach Jeff Reynolds. Coach, uh, two and one this past week. Uh, picked up a win on Friday against USC Aiken. Uh, kind of a monumental win. Uh, first time since 2008 uh, that the Bearcats have defeated the Pacers in Aiken. Um, and then uh, lost a hard fault five setter to the Pacers the next day, but rebounded to uh, take down the Mountain Lions last last night, 3-0. Um, tell us a little bit about the weekend and then last night. Well, yeah, the Aiken game has been, uh, the series has been something that we've kind of been, uh, you know, another one of those teams that we've had circled on our calendar, you know. We we feel like they're uh, an established program. They're, they're a solid program. They're well coached, good athletes. And if we can compete there and, and pick up wins, then we know we're kind of heading in the right direction. <clears throat> it's a... Um, and so to beat them on their court Friday night was was a was a nice uh, victory for our program. Uh, we knew, however, that Saturday they were gonna you know that they were gonna come back and fight hard because they're a good team and their defense was just uh, really really good and they were filling gaps and holes and seams and uh, we just uh, weren't able to find the floor at a consistent level. Uh, we took them to five sets and. Um, weren't able to take care of business in that last set so um, had to come back do some work on Monday get ready for last night and I think um, the scores indicated uh, you know I, I think compared to playing Young Harris last year I think that's another indicator that you know team is moving in the right direction so and um, something that hasn't happened since I think it was 1998 in the Peach Belt Conference uh, yesterday, Katie Miller was named Peach Belt Player of the Week for the third straight week. Uh, first time in program history that's happened. First time, like I said, since 1998 in the conference. Um, talk a little bit about her play uh, that earned her that award, and also uh, Maddie Reed recording her 4,000th career assist yeah. over the weekend at Aiken. Well, uh, and, I, and I'll, I, at the onset of answering the question, I think they both would tell you that um, they gave the credit to their teammates and stuff like that. These are, I keep telling the kids that individual accolades will always come if you put team first. And, and um, Maddie Reed is the epitome of a team player. Um, she's, she doesn't count her assists. She doesn't ever look at the box score to see how many assists she had. She's just, she just goes out, blue collar, and she does the job, you know. And um, she works hard to make sure that she's doing what she needs to be doing for the team to be successful. So, um, you know, I, I really expect that, you know, she's, she's close to the school record. So, um, you know, that's something we'll be keeping an eye on. Um, she doesn't want to know anything about that, of course, but, um, you know, she could possibly get there by the end of the season. So that would be a great thing for her. As far as Katie, um, Katie's uh, a player that I've been watching and recruiting for a few years. Um, when I was at Snow College, uh, she came to one of our camps and pulled me aside and told me that she wanted to play for us. <laughs> and so when I moved out here, um, I thought, wow, that's a big leap from Idaho to, to, Utah, or to South Carolina, but let's you know give it a shot. Brought her out on a visit, and she took some time to kind of think about it. She had some uh, Division One offers closer to home, and um, we're just thankful that she chose to come out here. She's uh, very, she's a she's a fun loving, um, sweet kid. Um, everybody on the team loves her, um, but when you put her on the court, she's got a different face. You know, she's a, she's a competitor, and she's not used to losing. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, we had on our list to, when we wanted to recruit her was um, her high school program, I think, lost like four or five games in three years. Mm -hmm. And um, her senior year, I think they went like 41 or 42 and 0 or something like that. So um, <clears throat> she's a competitor. And in addition to being a great volleyball player, she's a competitor. And that's something that really stood out to us. So following last night's win against Young Harris, uh, quick turnaround. Uh, yeah. You've got uh, you guys are hitting the ro road. Uh, you'll be taking on Georgia College, who right now you guys are one and two. Um, Landers a half game ahead. They're four and one. Georgia College is three and one. Uh, big road tests, just like this past weekend at Aiken. Um, what do you see from the Bobcats? 
I, I love the fact that um, <clears throat> this early, you know, we're a third of the way through the conference season. I, I love that we're now into really meaningful games. And so uh, it makes our job as coaches easier where we don't have to motivate. You know, kids look at the standings, they look at uh, the next game, and they get themselves ready. And so we just kind of have to work on the X's and O's and stuff like that. So we're not so worried about the mental aspect of preparing. So um, Georgia College is uh, a great, uh, they've done a great job this season. Um, you know, we split last year, and um, she's made some improvements to her roster, picked up some um, some transfer kids and in fact has one of our former players there and um you know uh they're competing and uh you know they beat Aiken the other day and that kind of like opened her eyes a little bit wow they're pretty good you know and they took Augusta to five sets last night and uh, lost a close one but on the road and uh you know they're they're a team that we've got to be ready for for sure so it's it's nice to be competing for meaningful games this early Absolutely. Well, Coach, thanks for taking the time um, to sit down with us and talk, and good luck Thursday and Friday, and we'll talk to you again soon. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, and we'll be back soon with the more of the Bearcats Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Lander University Coaches Show. We're here with men's head soccer coach Lee Squires, a 1-0-1 oh week in performance, but two shutouts against a scrappy USC Aiken team and a hard young Harris squad that always seems to give you fits, if you don't mind just kind of going through your thoughts on uh, the performance of the guys. Yeah, it was, um, it was a different week for us. Uh, I think the first two to three weeks of the season we were scoring a bunch of goals, um, playing some really good uh, entertaining soccer, but not quite having uh, the resiliency defensively to, um, to, to win more of those games. And then we've, we've found that part of it uh, in the last two games. Aiken's never an easy place to go, so you know, thankful to come out of that with, with three points. Um, and Young Harris is always a, a battle and a good test. And um, again, delighted with the clean sheet. Um, more happy with the second half uh, performance. Uh, but you know, ultimately, we want to be on the on the winning end of those games instead of you know instead of tying, especially at home. So um, positives again. But you know this this coming week's a big week for us where you know hopefully it'll all come together. And you mentioned a, a big week you up against a, a Clayton State team that's done fairly well over the last couple of weeks, and then you got a Georgia Southwestern squad that seems to have a, a two-headed dragon. Both guys there scoring six goals, so a, a very formidable offensive threat against a team that seems to get better and better year in and year out. Yeah, Clayton's um, you know Clayton's always. Uh, tough opponents. We saw that last year. They they have a lot of good technical players. They have the ability to score goals themselves. But you know we'll have a game plan that we'll be looking to execute. And um, you know that's always a tough trip down in Atlanta. So yeah, looking forward to that one. And like you said, Georgia Southwestern's got better year on year uh, in the last few years. Eric's done a great job down there and um, very formidable, especially at home. Uh, they have a, an identity about them that makes them difficult to play against. But you know, again, it's a, it's a huge week for us, two tough games on the road, and if we can somehow come out of it with six points, I think we'll be in a really good position. You had previously touched on uh, a lot of goals and a lot of goals scored by numerous players. I guess if you don't mind just kind of touching on the depth that you have this year, you don't have to rely really on just one or two players to produce your offense. There are guys that can just come out of the woodwork, like uh, Jed Smith scoring the game winner at, uh, at Aiken, but you have Marco Gwaley who's having a fantastic year, Kevin Rubashevsky, who's been scoring the ball, seems like every other game, just kind of, if you don't mind, just kind of talking on that offensive depth that you seem to have this year. Yeah, I think there's depth, you know, throughout the team. We, we touched on that early. We knew, you know, we've, we've been fortunate so far with not having too many injuries and, you know, having probably 90, 95% of the team available most games, but, um, you know, which has made selection sometimes more difficult. But yeah, we've we've been fortunate where goals have come from, you know, uh, different areas with Mark on Kevin out wide, Carson Dinger hit two and two, uh, Max McNulty up front's got a got a couple or three, um, and then we've had guys come off the bench and, and contribute. You know, Max Bolton and uh, Jed Smith got the winner uh, at, at Aiken the other day, and it's important. You know, we can't rely on one or two guys, um, maybe kind of like we did last season. Um, you know, because if those two or three guys don't 
uh, don't contribute or, or aren't you know on form one day, then you still got to be able to try and win the game. So scoring off a scrappy set piece with a centre back at uh, at Aiken was 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 nice, um, and it's going to be needed. We're going to need goals from all areas of the pitch, and, and we'll rely on that depth to do so. Well, a busy week for men's soccer. Two road games. Thank you so much for your time, Lee. We'll be right back with the Lander University Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Lander University Coaches Show. We're here with head women's soccer coach Chris Ayer. A bit of an interesting week. Tied Anderson, a strong regional team that uh, their offense up until facing you guys was, you know, going on all cylinders, but uh, a, a tie there and uh, fortunately a loss to a very strong Columbus State team. If you don't mind just kind of going through your thoughts on how the past week went. Yeah, we, I mean, we've played really well. We just the ball hasn't bounced necessarily the right direction for us, but you know I think we've done we've done some really good things. I think we have worked on lots of lots of things in the sessions the last week and have really built upon those. Um, unfortunately, sometimes soccer's a cruel game, mm -hmm. and you got to put the ball in the back of the net, and it just didn't happen for us. Uh, going up against Columbus State, nationally ranked, it seemed like you guys at times found ways to really carve through that defense. Had some good offensive chances, unfortunately losing 3-1, to one. Uh, what lessons can you take from going up against a, a team like that to uh, a team that you know you have history against and UNC Pembroke might not be in the same conference now, but your next opponent, what can you kind of apply going forward with that? Yeah, completely different teams. I think you can take a lot from the Columbus, State, the Columbus game. I mean, we, we can compete with anybody. We just, like I said, sometimes soccer's, it can be cruel, but, you know, finishing chances, finishing opportunities, and then, you know, not letting something that that we can probably clear a ball or do, doing something that can affect us. But Pembroke's a very, very good team as well. We've got a really tough schedule this year and um, you know, a different, different kind of team, but uh, something that we'll be ready for. But obviously going back to conference play, going on the road to Georgia Southwestern, a bit of a, a longer trip within yeah. the conference. Uh, you know, how, do you, how do you think you're going to match up against a, a gritty hurricane squad? Yeah, she's done a great job. And uh, you know, they, they definitely are growing. And, uh, just it's going to be a tough test. It's always a tough test. It's a, it's a four and a half, five hour drive. So just getting on the bus, getting off the bus, being focused and ready to rock and roll, and you know, that's that's part of part of the game. But you know we'll be we'll be ready for them on Saturday. All right, we'll be right back with the Lander University Coaches Show. We're back here with the Lander University Coaches Show. Now joined by Robert Shank, head field hockey coach. A bit of a interesting couple games you start off with regional and nationally ranked Converse and then most recently going on the road and picking up the program's first ever victory at Lincoln Memorial I guess let's just kind of start with the, the Lincoln Memorial game kind of how does it feel to finally get that first win under your belt yeah it was a, it was a good feeling uh, well deserved for the team um, going to LMU it's a long drive um, and being there without any subs. It was a little bit of a, a frightening moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the team was amazing. They were very professional um, from start to finish. Um, and they just, they were eager. They were a lot of energy. So team credit for sure. Uh, you kind of mentioned uh, the, the lack of subs with LMU. You had some uh, additional pieces for the, the Converse game. How did uh, getting some players from uh, women's lacrosse and having them kind of play into that you know how did how did they respond to that challenge yeah no it was great um just to have a few extra legs on the side um to do a quick sop and it's only a few minutes but it was very helpful and um, i'm very thankful that the lacrosse um, girls were, were available um, to help us out for sure uh against lmu it seemed like goals were coming from multiple sources and going forward throughout the season kind of with your with your attack plan i guess that's quite promising knowing that you can get goals mm -hmm. from numerous avenues going forward for sure um the way how we approach this year we talked uh with the team about it and who do we want to be what do we want to stand for and we have discussed as a team that we want to attack we mm -hmm. don't want to defend we are a new program we are waiting for everything but we're just going to attack. We're going to set a high press, and um, hence the lots of people on the scoring sheet. Um, the interchange between position is amazing. The girls pick it up really well. Um, so we have a few midfielders in there who are in front of the goal, mm -hmm. meaning that the forwards there will be backing up and playing their position. So the rotations are, are great, hence the, um, the, the power and then the attack that we have so far. Got a bit of a down period right now. How can you kind of use this off time to mentally and physically prepare uh, going forward throughout the, the rest of your season? 
Um, I have to say the team is doing really well on that part. They they want to they want to train more. They want to stay active. Um, hence the situation that we're in right now. We're we're doing pretty good. Um, the additional sessions that they have, it's all coming from them. I just have to make sure that we have a, an available field. But um, yeah, they, they, they just go and they um, they kind of want to play every day. I kind of have to stop them at some point. <laughs> but it's the team that um, that wants to go um, put more energy in and be stronger for the next game. Well, that's great to hear. We'll be right back with the Lander University Coaches Show. Welcome back to the Lander University Coaches Show. We're here with women's rugby coach Ken Pape had a tough matchup against NAIA squad, a very formidable life university squad that always seems to be in the national contention on that side, and then playing conference foe Guilford, if you don't mind just kind of going through your thoughts, kind of a, a different dynamic for each match. Yeah, so if you think in terms of life is equivalent to like, let's say Clemson in basketball versus our basketball team, our, our fellows are gonna give a good, sh good show. Uh, but at the end, Clemson is going to be a little too much for him. And, and that was the case here. The score really doesn't reflect the game. Um, from the previous week, we played Navy, another great opponent. But life has been in the national championship game 10 of the last 12 years. In the, a national championship game, has won it several times. They're a really, really good squad. So we're just excited that we got the opportunity to actually to play with them. And, after the game, their coach was telling me, he's like, I hope this becomes a permanent fixture, like your defense was really pushing us. Um, you know, and then, and then we got to play a developmental squad in Guilford, which I was really excited about. Um, they're a brand new program, kind of like we were last year. Um, they're developing their systems and putting those in place. Um, and, and we all know it's a process, right? Like last year, we couldn't compete at that level, uh, at, you know, in 15s. So, you know, last year Queens and other teams made accommodations to be able to play us. And that's the situation here uh, with Guilford. Uh, we, we played them in a sevens match. Um, unfortunately, they only had seven players that were, were capable. Um, and unfortunately, towards the end of the second half, they took on two, two pretty serious injuries that limited their ability to continue to compete. Um, we won that game, I think it was 25 to, to five. Um, they had a really nice score in the middle of the field, which was great. Um, but, you know, overall, you know, we, we've been doing this for a little bit, so you know, we have a little bit of an advantage over them. You go on the road again, this time taking on Newberry. Uh, what are some lessons that you can take from taking on Navy, who in their circuit has been in national, you know, national title contention a bunch of years going forward, and obviously life in the NA NAIA side, you know, competing in that same environment. What are mm -hmm. some of the lessons that you can take going into that match and also as you enter conference play later on in the 15th year? So what's really cool about how we set up our schedule this year is we set up chunks. Mm -hmm. So we had the preseason chunk before we played any games. Then we had what we called the impossible mission chunk. And that was facing off the likes of Life and, and Navy. And we were supposed to play Virginia Tech, which would have been a great game. Um, we were supposed to play a women's, uh, a women's team which would have really, we'd be in a little bit better of a position. Um, unfortunately, those first, those last two teams weren't able to feel the side. So um, I really like where we are. Um, our defense has improved week over week. Um, that's last week, you know, launching up on defense, creating a lot of havoc. You know, life just has the skills to be able to move it back inside. Um, but, you know, against this Newberry side that's coming up, I'm really excited about that. You know, we get to play a second week of sevens. Uh, Newberry, another new team coming into the conference. Um, being able to give them a game. Um, they've got really good coaching. Um, Coach Emily is terrific. Um, you know, she coached a couple of our girls at the, uh, the national <coughs> level, um, which was great. Um, and then just moving on from there into to Citadel. Um, and Citadel will be our first October test of the, of the season, which I'm really pumped up about. They have always given us headaches, um, and I'm just hoping that our defense is going to come through for us then. As we move more into October and November, what are some of the matchups that uh, you're excited about and that fans should definitely kind of keep an eye out? I know that we got Westchester coming down, a formidable team from Pennsylvania 
that's in the conference this year. But what are some uh, matchups that fans should definitely circle and you know really try to come out for? Yeah, I mean, it just seems like every time I'm talking to you guys, I'm talking about teams that were in the national championship, right? So, like, Westchester last year was the runner-up at the national championship. They came in second. So that's a great game. That's a home game for us. It's the first time we're going to play them at this house. Um, we're playing them on October 15th, which is exciting. Um, you know, right after that, we got Queens. Another, you know, they're the gold. Like I've always said, they're the gold standard. They're what, they are what we strive to, to, to beat. To beat. Um, but honestly, on the schedule, our code blue game against Clemson, that's a game for me that really gets me going. Um, you know, I haven't talked to the president previously. He was, you know, really excited about our ability to be able to beat Clemson. And, you know, they're not going to be an easy walkover. You know, we've beaten them the last couple times. But, you know, if they're getting 50 and 60 players out to, to practice. Um, it's going to be a tough game for us. And I'm really excited about that match, especially, you know, with all the hype behind the Clemson team. Alrighty, a lot going on with women's rugby. We'll be right back with the Lander University Coaches Show. We're back here with the Lander University Coaches Show, now with Buck Billings, head men's rugby coach. Uh, if you don't mind just kind of going through uh, some of the most recent performances, a couple of tough tests uh, against Virginia Tech and uh, most recently UNC. Uh, yeah, so we played uh, UNC in the rain. It was a, a, you know, a downpour. Um, and the, the rain kind of got to us. We had a lot of handling errors, but, um, but we, we stayed in the match the whole game, and uh, UNC kind of pulled it out there at the end. Um, but they're a good, a good program. You know, you've got uh, Luke Teixeira, who's been an All-American, played with our, our college national team. Um, they have number eight that's really good. So it's a skilled team, but we'll get to play them again at their place. Hopefully the conditions will be drier and, you know, we won't have as many handling errors. But uh, I think our guys will be up for the task the next time we get to play them. A bit of a, a late venue change going from the grass of New Res Field here at Lander University playing at Emerald High School on turf. You know, how did uh, you know, how, how do you think the guys kind of handled that, that late change in terms of uh, the playing situation? I thought they handled it well. Um, you know, usually when you play rugby on turf, there, there's a lot of turf burns and, you know, uh, abrasions, but it was so wet, uh, we didn't see any abrasions, we didn't have any turf burn, so it was still pretty slick. But, uh, but the guys were, you know, they were just glad that we got to have the match, um, that we were able to keep it. Um, and then, yeah, so, but I think next time um, we'll, we'll be, uh, uh, I think we'll have a much better game. Obviously a couple matches into the season, is there anyone that's really kind of stood out to you in terms of just uh, overall performance or just uh, you know maybe exceeding expectations from where you kind of had them at the beginning of the year yeah so um, so last week we played uh, Virginia Tech on Friday night and uh, in Blacksburg they're the defending national champs and uh, previously been a, a 1a program right now they're playing 1AA and we've just been elevated to 1AA uh, now that was a, a, a great matchup it was uh, eight to five at the end of the first half but uh, we were about to score to take the lead going into halftime and uh, they intercepted a pass and took the length of the field so they had some momentum going into half 13 to eight but we kept it there for uh, for the first half of the second half for the next 20 minutes it stayed a one score game um, and so you know some of the players that really stood out in that game was you know, a sophomore local player um, crossed over from high school football and wrestling is Ethan Sasuerta. You know, he was our man of the match, and um, he, he just he played great. Another local uh, player uh, from Greenwood High School that played football there, Blaine Tomas, uh, he, he was, you know, he's just getting better every week and stepping into leadership and everything. And, and we've got players that, that we knew were going to be good coming into the year. Um, our captain, uh, you know, Hayden Bullwinkle, uh, other captain, Cam Smith, they've been very consistent and solid. Uh, Tomas Moussi, um, national team player from Paraguay, you know, he's, he's been playing really well. Um, you know, he'll be going back to Paraguay for the South American Games here in a couple of weeks, but um, he's been playing great. And, and Lariano, uh, Petrus, um, we've had to move him to some different positions because of injuries, mm -hmm. and he, everywhere he's played, he's stepped in and, and done a great job. 
I just brief, briefly touching on uh, Tomas playing for the National Paraguay side there for the, the those uh, big games there. What does that mean for uh, in terms of the, the profile of the program, knowing that you're able to recruit and bring in players with that caliber? Uh, it's great. You know, it's uh, international players. You know, we're getting to see that they can continue with international aspirations if they do come here and play. You know, we'll give you know we'll give them the opportunities to pursue that and you know it's that's one of the biggest stages for sevens rugby in South America is is this tournament so it'll be uh, it's great exposure for us and uh, it's just a tremendous opportunity for him mm -hmm. yeah. moving things a bit more local got a couple of matches against the Citadel where are you looking from the guys uh, in those those matches uh, the Citadels you know it's it's kind of our rival and you know we're, we're we're close with their program. All our guys know their guys, but it's also a rivalry, so we know we're going to get their their best effort. Uh, we know that they're going to be very physical. They're going to be very fit. Uh, we're you know it's going to be a, a test of, of strength at times, and and just a little bit of who, who wants it the most. Mm -hmm. If we can you know stick to our game plan, I think we can can challenge their uh, physicality and fitness with uh, just keep keeping our attack in shape, keeping our line integrity and line speed up on defense will be paramount. But it's going to be a great match. Hopefully so. Thank you, Buck, for your time, and thank you for watching the Lander University Coaches Show.